यहाँ पे मौजूद सभी शिक्षक विद्यार्थी शिक्षक भी विद्यार्थी ही होता है और कभी कभी विद्यार्थी भी शिक्षक बन जाता है सो so, शिक्षक और विद्यार्थी आपस में इंटरचेंज होते रहते हैं सात साल मैं डॉक्टर कलाम के साथ था उसी घर में रहता था एक बड़ी सी लाइब्रेरी थी लाइब्रेरी के दूसरे छोर पे छोटा वाला कमरा डॉक्टर कलाम का था और लाइब्रेरी के अगले छोर पे बड़ा वाला कमरा मेरा था अब क्यों उनका कमरा छोटा था और मेरा बड़ा था ये फैसला उनका था तो आप इसके लिए मुझे गुनेगार नहीं ठहरा सकते ठीक है और हर रोज सुबह साढ़े नौ दस बजे हम लोग एक छोटा सा ऑफिस था जिसमें महज तीन कंप्यूटर रखने की जगह थी फाइलों से भरा हुआ था किताबें थी किताबें तो ऐसे चारों ओर पड़ी रहती थी उधर भी जहाँ भी जगह मिलती थी किताबें वहाँ पे अपना स्थान बना लेती थी और रोज सुबह साढ़े नौ दस बजे जब हम ऑफिस शुरू करते थे तो वो अपने हाथ में ऐसे मैगजीन की या अखबार की जो पन्ने होते हैं उसके बीच में कुछ बुकमार्क लगा लगा करके आते थे और रोज सुबह साढ़े नौ बजे मेरे को बोलते थे देखो मैंने ये नया पढ़ा मैंने ये नई चीज़ पढ़ी आज आधे घंटे वो मेरे को समझाते थे कि उन्होंने क्या पढ़ा और फिर कहते थे अब तुम क्या वॉट विल यू गिव मी यू टेल मी तो मैं इंटरनेट पे जाकर के रोज़ रात में शाम को कुछ उनके लिए नए नए आर्टिकल्स निकाल के रखता था फिर आधे घंटे मैं उनको पढ़ाता था हर रोज़ एक घंटे सुबह की शुरुआत आधा घंटा मेरे शिक्षक मुझे पढ़ाते थे और आधे घंटे मेरे शिक्षक मेरे विद्यार्थी बन जाते थे तिरासी साल की उम्र तक वो यही करते रहे मिसाइल मैन बन गए स्पेस साइंटिस्ट बन गए राष्ट्रपति न्यूक्लियर मैन बने राष्ट्रपति बने सब कुछ कर लिया लेकिन अपने अंदर से एक उत्सुक विद्यार्थी को उन्होंने कभी अपने से जुदा नहीं किया अगर आप अच्छे शिक्षक बनना चाहते हैं सब कुछ सारे फॉर्मूला हम लगा लेंगे पॉलिसी लगा लेंगे टेक्नोलॉजी लगा लेंगे डिजिटल ले आएंगे सैटेलाइट ले आएंगे बोलिए तो होलोग्राफ ले आएंगे चंद्रयान ले आएंगे लेकिन जब तक आप अपने अंदर उस उत्सुक ज्ञान के लिए प्यासे बच्चे को वापस नहीं जगाएंगे और जगा के रखेंगे नहीं तब तक हम अच्छे शिक्षक नहीं बन सकते चाहे वो अच्छे शिक्षक इंस्टीट्यूशनल स्कूलों में हो चाहे वो अच्छे शिक्षक परिवार में हो हम परिवार की शिक्षा को भूल जाते हैं परिवार भी शिक्षा एक बहुत बड़ा स्रोत है बच्चा छः घंटा स्कूल में निकालता है बाकी टाइम तो घर पे निकालता है पहले अल्फाज सीखना बच्चा स्कूल से नहीं सीखता माँ से सीखता है पहले कदम बढ़ाना वो शायद अपने पिता से सीखता है तो ये शिक्षक बनना यदि आप फॉर्मल शिक्षक हैं या नहीं हैं लेकिन आप डेफिनेटली एक फॉर्मल फैमिली मेंबर तो डेफिनेटली हैं और इसलिए हम सब के लिए अच्छा शिक्षक बनना आवश्यक है डॉक्टर कलाम उससे एक बल्कि किसी से भी आपसे भी मिलते तो एक सवाल पूछते कि वॉट विल यू बी रिमेंबर्ड फॉर अब आपसे वो एक बार पूछते क्योंकि वो आपसे एक बार मिलते मुझसे वो रोज़ पूछते थे क्योंकि रोज़ मिलते थे और हर बार कहते थे कल तुमने ये बताया था आज उसके ऊपर नया क्या सोचा तुमने वॉट आई विल बी रिमेंबर्ड फॉर मैं किस चीज़ के लिए याद रखा जाऊँ अब एक ही सवाल बार बार सुनते सुनते एक दिन मैंने उनसे पूछा सर वो तो छोड़ो आप बताओ व्हाट विल यू बी रिमेंबर्ड फॉर और चूंकि मैं कैट क्वालिफाइड हूँ मैंने चार ऑप्शन जिंदगी में चार ऑप्शन पे ही जिया हूँ तो ऑप्शन नंबर वन मिसाइल मैन ऑप्शन नंबर टू स्पेस साइंटिस्ट ऑप्शन सी न्यूक्लियर मैन ऑप्शन फोर प्रेजिडेंट्स पीपल्स प्रेजिडेंट बोलते थे उनको तो उन्होंने बोला ये सारे ऑप्शन गलत हैं क्योंकि मैं याद रखे जाना चाहता हूँ एज अ गेस्ट करिए एज अ टीचर एज ए टीचर पहली बार मैं जब डॉक्टर कलाम से मिला 2007 में 8 में आए अहमदाबाद में मुझे पढ़ाने आए थे तब भी एक शिक्षक थे आखिरी बार जब मैं डॉक्टर कलाम से मिला 27 जुलाई 2015 को आई एम शिलोंग में आई एम अहमदाबाद था या आई एम शिलोंग था देश के दूसरे कोने पर वो अंतिम दिन तक भी एक शिक्षक के रूप में थे शिक्षक बनना उनके लिए एक सबसे बड़े गौरव की बात थी और हमारे आज के समय की सबसे बड़ी विडंबना ये है कि जिस देश में हम द्रोणाचार्य बोलते हैं शिक्षक को हम भगवान से बुरा बड़ा बोलते हैं कि भगवान से भी बड़ा है शिक्षक गुरु के चरण सबसे बड़े हैं द्रोणाचार्य का देश उस देश में शिक्षक अपने आप को शिक्षक बनने के लिए गौरान्वित महसूस नहीं करते हैं और इसका कारण आर्थिक बिल्कुल नहीं है 
सरकारी स्कूल में मिलने वाली जो सैलरी है वो अच्छी खासी है उसमें कोई ये नहीं कह सकता कि मैं आर्थिक रूप से विकसित नहीं हो पा रहा हूँ इसलिए मेरे को गौरव नहीं है तो फिर ये समस्या कहाँ से आ गई ये नहीं समझ में आया हमारे इंडियन वैल्यूज से शायद जो हमारा डिपार्चर हुआ है शायद इसकी वजह से शिक्षक अपने आप को गौरवान्वित महसूस नहीं करते कुछ दिन पहले मैं एक इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज के सबको हिंदी आती है ना बहुत कोई ऐसा नहीं है इज ए समन हू डजेंट अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी ऑल इंग्लिश अच्छा इज ए समन हू डजेंट अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी यू कैन जस्ट रेज योर हैंड ओके आई एम सो सॉरी आई एम सो सॉरी आई एम ए बैड टीचर आई डिड नॉट टेक योर कंसेंट ऑन दिस ओके वील वील डू इट इन इंग्लिश नाउ सी आई आई सॉट ऑफ अज्यूम फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस सेशन दैट वी कैन गो इन हिंदी फ्लो बट वील मेक इट अ इंग्लिश फ्लो नाउ सो where was i so i was saying that the indian value system has inherent respect for teachers and the way we have departed from the indian value system yoga being a part of it but not just yoga but all values which we inculcate you know how guru purnima has been replaced by teachers day and teachers day means giving gifts isn't it if you are in a convent school you will understand what i am saying guru purnima meant giving respect so how we have departed from celebrating guru purnima to you know a new kind of a concept is something uh, which is a departure from our indian traditional values and also institutions themselves have changed the way they behave about 6 months ago i met an engineering college owner he is the owner of an engineering college and he said and i'll translate it saab market kharab hai na bacche nahi mil rahe he said i am not getting admissions because the market is bad you see when you think that running an education institute is a market and you take uh, your students as a commodity and admissions are a target that day the value of education is lost education becomes information you know it's me passing you information right the day even when we start assessing a college by how many people get placed in what salaries the value of education is lost it becomes a factory and that has been the biggest problem you know what i don't want to sound a pessimist because i am not a pessimist i am the most hardcore optimist you can find and that i learned through life and experience so let me talk something optimistic few days ago india launched the mission called chandrayaan 2 you all know it how many of you watched it live at 150 which channel did anybody watch on nat geo so if somebody watched on nat geo i was hosting that show but what happened was that the very next so this went on for 2 3 days but you know a conversation i saw how the conversation of children shifted how a child in india within a matter of a day was able to tell you why is south pole of the moon important why what is a thruster why do you need five thrusters and not one thruster what is an orbiter what is a lander what is a rover what is the name of it how much is the weight of it why are we going to the moon what is what is helium 3 what is titanium on moon how do you build bricks on moon using moon material all that conversation became ingrained in our children in no time and gives me great optimism no society i have visited across the world i have seen schools i have seen school students has children in class 4 5 6 who can tell you so accurately about what is the south pole of the moon and what is the dark side of the moon try having a conversation with children you know why did it happen and i wondered you keep telling them in geography you keep telling them in science and they never understood but you told them in chandrayaan two terms and they understood almost everyone found science boring found math horrifying almost everyone some of them who didn't okay one or two didn't very good good to see like okay so that's why you're occupying front rows <laughs> right so why is it that we have not been able to make education interesting because we never talk in terms of what education can do we never talk in terms of how great things can be created with what you are being taught we never talk about you know things like chandrayaan 
वॉट गोज इन इट वॉट थ्योरी गोज इन इट वी हैव नेवर टॉक्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ हिंदी में जिसको बोलते हैं व्यावहारिक भाषा वी हैव ऑलवेज टॉक्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स वेरिएबल्स जी इज इक्वल टू दिस दैट एंड वाई यू डूइंग इट आई डोंट नो इन वर्क टाइम मैथमेटिक्स आई यूज टू हेयर अबाउट अ सिस्टर बींग फिल्ड बाई टू टैप्स आई हैड नेवर सीन अ सिस्टर इन माई लाइफ यू नो especially in that age i had to go and find a dictionary what is a cistern why can't we talk in terms of buckets yaar and that i see every day it's so practical but we never did that because we just copy pasted and part of it is to do with what i was telling you in the morning the mccauleyism lord mccauley was the one who said homogenize india's education so we homogenized india's education and english became you know the epitome of knowledge it's very good to know english it's a matter of pride that india has the second largest english knowing population in the world we've beaten the british in their own game haven't we we should be proud of it but that doesn't mean knowing english doesn't mean you should become english english is a language why do we make it such a big deal you know big fuss out of it angrezi aati hai to aap bade ho nahi aati hai to bekar ho what takes you know i i want to shift to the topic of teachers and i often wonder what it takes to make a kalam because that is what we do at kalam center we try to make kalams i'm happy to tell you we have made about 2 lakh kalams and how we make kalam i'll tell you later but the number is important you see it takes two things to make a kalam it takes a seva subramanya mayer and a newspaper to make a kalam you know that kalam was a newspaper boy you know he used to be a hawker a newspaper hawker and back then in 1940 there was a second world war going around and the second world war the royal air force was fighting a battle with the luftwaffe which was the german air force and every day there would be new and we we didn't have a choice we had to be on the british side right nobody asked us right so we were basically selling these glorified stories of the british pilots shooting down the german pilots who were trying to you know bomb them and every day they will be in the newspaper the front story would be that you know being a pilot was you know ye kiya usne five five shot down and he shot down 10 he's an ace this that and here was this little boy who was 9 years old distributing these newspapers in his elder brother's bicycle and he used to read it and he said i want to be a pilot in rameshwaram in rameshwaram where there was no there was no airfield in chennai let alone rameshwaram there still no airfield in rameshwaram but he saw it as an information as a sort of expanding the world and showing what the world meant and then but that was not enough information is just one leg of it the other part of the story comes from a person a teacher who was his teacher back then called seva subramanyam ayer a muslim boy's teacher was a hindu brahmin and he asked his teacher how do birds fly because that's the only thing which was flying in his vicinity there was no airplane and then this teacher explained to this little boy and the class on how birds fly nobody understood and that's where a machine would have stopped machine would have said error and stopped right but a human does not a good teacher does not So this teacher takes the child by the hand takes him to the seashore and shows him seagulls and shows him practically see how they are turning their tail flapping their wings how they are changing directions and that's how this boy learned how things fly and that gave wings to his dream to be a pilot Now he could not qualify the pilot exam though he tried a lot he missed it by one rank but that process which was started by a primary school teacher who opened the world to him made him become a missile man a hovercraft designer a satellite man a nuclear scientist and eventually the president of india and not far from here pune in 2006 he was the first president to fly a sukhoi 30 mki not far from here he realized his dream it takes a teacher to inculcate nurture and grow a dream we need dreamers we don't need problem solvers 
that's easy analytics anybody can do data analysis everybody any computer can do you know engineering you've got softwares doctors today you've got webmd.com half of america is using online medical uh, sites for their medication and that's what i was telling in the morning you need healers you need builders you need creative people and the right brain as somebody was talking about the right brain is important that we've just ignored our entire education is essentially it does it it's focused on the head it's extremely biased against the body and also on the head it's slightly to the left so the entire education is targeting your left brain it's all about analytical skills remembering words and producing sentences somehow we need to change that and how will it that happen from the process of a new education policy is something for policy makers to think and ponder how it can happen on ground level is something for people like us to do and we do that i'll come to that in the final section you see there are close to 58 no 58 plus 21 close to 80 lakh teachers in india in schools 80 lakh almost a crore that's about 1% of your population is a teacher in some school i'm not even counting professors 1% of population and transforming this 1% of population upgrading them to a skill level is a mammoth hill task but as nelson nelson mandela says to destroy a nation you don't need nuclear bombs and guided missiles you need to destroy their education system and create an examination system where cheating is possible and you'll destroy the nation are we self destructing our nation is a question we should ask and should it not be a priority i have not seen you know this new education policy is coming after 30 some years three decades we had we didn't realize that you know so many new soap brands so many new this brand that brand computers came in this period internet came in this period mobile phones came in this period for 30 years we were sleeping on it none of these inventions meant anything to upgrading our education 30 years even this education policy was I'm, i don't know whether we can criticize but this education policy itself was formed in 2014 as a committee it took 5 years one government gone the government thankfully repeat so that new education policy doesn't start from zero and on the 6th year it came out with a draft 6 years to draft 400 pages of new education policy is it a priority and if it's not shouldn't it be a priority friends dr kalam taught me one thing you know information is just information it may be digital it may be words it may be something it means nothing information when you add values to it which is a topic of our discussion it becomes knowledge knowledge has got power and if with knowledge you add a purpose knowledge plus purpose it becomes wisdom today we need to move from the information age to the wisdom age countries which reach their first will be the winners they will be the direction givers to the rest of the world the same splitting of atom in 1945 burned down two cities to smithereens nothing was left if you have ever been to hiroshima you'll know what i'm saying you should see a before and after photo and you realize that maybe science was not something which we should have pursued at all but the same splitting of atom is powering cities the same which burned cities can power cities the same vaccines which were once the same medicines which were used as toxins can also be used as medicines science is a scalar quantity if you know physics science is scalar it has no direction it becomes a vector it has a direction only when it has values and hence science and spirituality are not enemies they are the best friends and they need to go together they complete each other spirituality without science is also bottomless pit there's no justification to it and that's why in a spiritual kevala dham you have a scientific research center and that is why it is important and i also believe in every scientific facility you should have a spiritual center <laughs> couple of things uh, i have i am one of the 2 lakh people who have written a commentary on national uh, new education policy 2 lakh people have written that's a good news 
uh, a bit scary that whether they'll ever go through my thing. So I also wrote an editorial in one of the Hindi newspaper, the Hindi Jagran, so that at least somebody reads, right? Couple of things uh, which, uh, in fact, Dr. Kalam's final book called Advantage India, we co-authored it. Uh, it came after he passed away, it was published, but nevertheless, it was co-authored with him. And in that book, there's a, the biggest chapter is on education. You should get a hand on, I'm not trying to sell my book, but you should get a hand on that copy. And the biggest chapter is on human resource, right? Now, one of the ideas is this, and we've been long pursuing this. Imagine a teacher, 50 years old, 55 years old, just about to retire. I'm sure you'll be aware of such teachers. On comes a 23 year old IS officer, a 23 year old provincial civil services officer, who's going to be in this department for a maximum of eight to 10 months and then move on to next department. But this teacher's entire administration and his boss is this new person who has no experience of teaching, who has no interest in teaching because he's going to move out in a while who's not a career teacher, and yet we have created a system where the administration of teachers, which in this country becomes the boss of the teachers, is actually a civil services officer. Dr. Kalam and I, we had written in the book that that system needs to change. If you need specific officers for policing, you know, you don't get an IPS officer ki position by IS officer. You even think forests are more important, which they are, Forests are very important, but maybe not as important as education. But you have different foreign services, you have different forest services, you have different uh, corporate services, you know, Indian corporate affairs services, then you have Indian, all kinds of services you have, but there's no such thing as Indian teaching services. One of the ideas we said that the administration of teachers from end to end should be done by teachers, because only a teacher can empathize with a teacher, can a teacher be compassionate about the cause of a teacher, can have a stake in the future of the teachers. And hence, India needs to have <laughs> India needs to have Indian teaching services. Hence, what we do is uh, I'll quickly now come to a conclusion because I think time has also run out. Almost, I'm taking some privilege. What we do at Kalam Center, as I was being introduced, that we try and we really try hard to live up to the legacy and values of Dr. Kalam. Sometimes living up to the work of a person is easier, but living up to the values of integrity poses all kinds of questions and dilemmas in you. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? Living up to values is difficult. And it's only Indian values which can provide you the backbone to live up to integrity, compassion, no matter what. It helps you build that brand around you. We're trying to do that. We started this mission in 2015, as Dr. Kalam passed away the same year, with the idea that one of his dreams was that no child in this country should not have access to wisdom and knowledge. Not information. Information is online be available. Har tarah ki, positive, negative, sab available. But how can we give access to knowledge and wisdom to each child? Which means mentorship, not just information. We started off with a mission and we have to do it for free because we are doing it with the bottom of the pyramid. And our target segment was children observatories to begin with. Children observatories are places which you'll never visit because these are children who are delinquent, ch child delinquencies. You know, they have done some crime in the eyes of the state and they have been punished. There's no mincing words, it's a, it's a jail meant for children. And there are children who are 13 years old, 14 year old, 17 year old living together. So that was our target segment. To begin with, of course, we expanded to schools. In Gujarat, we've covered all, every single such center. In Telangana, we've done a lot of work. In uh, Himachal, we've done work. In Delhi, we, we're spanning across 14 states now. 100 institutes, which include these centers, children observatories and schools. 1,000 such centers have been established. Each one of them is called Kalam Library, and it tells children on how to become a Kalam. We have about 900 teachers on our roles, which we call as, they're more like auxiliary teachers. They are youngsters like you, who have, we have trained and they do a eight month fellowship with us. And they go out to schools and they teach not just values, but also science. So we mix them. We teach the most cutting edge science, like astrobiology, which is the science of life in space. We like nanotechnology, which is the size of anything into 10 to the power of minus nine meter like uh, how to design satellites, how to design rovers on Mars, how to uh, create the next big medical revolution and so on and so forth. 
and each child goes through this and when they have gone through it we rename them as kalao and we do it in social media only we don't do an affidavit or something but if you go to facebook today and you search the word kalam and you search the people with that name you will find tens of thousands of people because they these volunteers exist as kalams and they do this selflessly close to 2 lakh children have been in from february to today because that's the cycle of our uh, our fellowship in this fellowship round we impacted 2 lakh children each child and these are government school children these are madrasa kids these are children in observatories has been taught on how to live on mars how to design electric vehicle how to service it so on so forth that's what we do and we are also training all kinds of teachers across districts on the same technologies you know dr kalam used to say dreams are those which you don't see when you sleep dreams are not those which you see when you sleep but dreams are those which don't let you sleep sapne wo nahi hote jo aap sote hue dekhte hain sapne wo hote hain jo aapko sone nahi dete wo kaun se sapne hain hamare jo hame sone nahi dete apne liye apne aas paas ke liye अपने क्षेत्र के लिए अपने देश के लिए अपनी धरती के लिए अपनी मानव सभ्यता के लिए ये सपने देखने आवश्यक हैं और ये सपने अगर आपको सोने नहीं देंगे तो विश्वास मैं आपको दिलाता हूँ आई गिव यू ऑल द अश्योरेंस एंड द कॉन्फिडेंस दैट इफ यू हैव ड्रीम्स विच डोंट लेट यू स्लीप दर इज नथिंग विच कैन स्टॉप यू फ्रॉम रियलाइजिंग दोज ड्रीम्स थैंक यू फॉर योर टाइम थैंक यू